Moving on now to Catherine McKinnell, MP. Can you hear me, Catherine? Yes, I can. Thank you. And it's good to be here today, although I really wish we didn't have to be. Um, I was honoured to lead the debate on Tim's petition back in February as chair of Parliament's Petitions Committee. Before we, the debate, we took evidence. We heard, um, as John has said on the, um, on the DCMS committee, we heard evidence about how working as a creative can be unpredictable, precarious, with low rates of pay, but how creative stick with it because it's your passion, it's your calling, it's the way to fulfill your dreams. And we've heard again today from so many people how working in the EU, whether it's touring, recording, teaching, or jumping on a plane at the last minute to fill in for someone is an absolute lifeline and essential part of making a living. It's not a nice to have, it's essential. And, and we know how the last 14 months has been catastrophic for an industry often reliant on large gatherings and frequent travel. Um, but what Tim and now the almost 300,000 people so far who've signed his petition have highlighted is how that overlap between lockdown and the pandemic that we've all been experiencing, but also the end of the Brexit transition have masked problems created by that failure to reach an agreement with the EU for touring artists, which is now very much coming to the fore as we, as we very much hope on moving out of this pandemic. So with events like the summit, your campaign, it's really important more and more people are coming to understand what it means for the future of live music, for actors, for creatives, for touring, but for our world renowned creative industries, our cultural impact and influence around the world, but also for what it means for fans, for those of us who love music, art and culture and want to continue enjoying it the way we have um, over the last however many years we've been in the European Union, but for me, you know, as an adult. So we need the government to find a workable solution, but we know the government has created quite a lot of difficulty for itself, insisting that exceptions for creatives would be incompatible with ending freedom of movement. Allowing EU creatives to work in the EU on a temporary basis is just not compatible with what we had previously, where we could work and live in the EU indefinitely. And so ministers, must understand that working and touring in the EU, it's not an optional extra for creatives. It's an essential part of their careers. It's an essential part of what we love about the creative industries. So I know that there's looking at bilateral agreements with EU countries, but that is very much a second best solution. But if that is what is on offer in the short term, it needs to be absolutely proactively prioritized and we need to negotiate. Um, it urgently to get cultural exemptions. But also, I think I share many of the frustrations about the he said, she said that's gone on with the EU or claims that the industry representatives have supported the government's stance in negotiations because it's not helpful. We all need to pull in the same direction on this. Music and creativity thrive on cultural exchange and collaboration. And I know that campaigners, artists and parliamentarians want to work with ministers we want to work with ministers. We all need to work together for the benefit of creative industries so that you can all carry on touring. So I just want to say a big thank you for organising today. It's really vital that we shout up that as parliamentarians, we do what we can and work together. But it's also really vital that we raise the public's awareness of this, the impact on our industries, but the impact on our ability to enjoy music and creative industries and everything that we want you to keep producing. So thank you. And thank you, Catherine. Thank you for being here.